Well, this is a very interesting set of scriptures we have this morning and a very interesting story, right? To me, it's a little off-putting though, right? If you were one of the members of that crowd coming out of Nain that morning and Jesus came up, you're in this funeral procession, right? There's the bearers carrying the buyer and Jesus comes up and stops them and he says, sit up. And all of a sudden, this boy sits up and starts to talk. What's the first thing you're going to do? <laughs> and run like a little girl. And if you are asleep, now you're awake. So it's all good. Right? I mean, really, they don't react the way that we think you're going to react. Right? If Jesus comes up and raises somebody from the dead, the answer is not going to be, oh, I'm a little bit afraid, but God is great. Right? I'll come back to that after a little bit of time. But they had fear and they praised God. And then they said, a great prophet has arose among us, right? Has arose is the, is the interesting thing there. It's a passive verb, which means that the prophet isn't the one doing the action, but somebody is doing the action upon the prophet. The prophet has arose. And who is it that's doing the action? The person that is really doing the action in all of this story. See, the story is not about Jesus raising anybody from the dead. But you say, well, pastor, it is because the story was Jesus raised the boy from the dead. But Jesus was the vessel for what God had done here. And God is the one who rose the prophet. And the prophet is what we heard about in the first reading, right? In Ezekiel chapter 17, in Kings chapter 17, we hear the story of the prophet Ezekiel. Right before this, before this woman's son dies and Ezekiel raises this son from the dead, this woman was getting ready to go out, get some water because she had a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. She was going out to get enough water with her son to make their last bit of bread. She was going to go home and cook bread. They were going to eat it and they were going to lay down to die. But Ezekiel said, you'll see a, a, a widow, the Lord told Ezekiel, you'll see a widow come to the gate, and she will be the one that will provide for you. So Ezekiel, when he saw her, said, go make me some bread. And she said, I'm going to make bread so we can die. This is all I've got. And he said, if you trust me and trust the Lord, this will not run out. And that jar of oil and that jar of flour never ran out. But then her son dies. And what have you done to bring this calamity on us? Right? Ezekiel saw a need because God showed him where it was. And when Jesus was approaching Nain with his disciples, he saw a need because he can see beyond what we see. And as you look around the room this morning, you see people sitting next to you. Do you know these people? Some of them, yes. Some of them, no, right? We have some visitors here this morning for our, to see our, our group singing. So, but do you actually really know these people that you're sitting next to? Do you know the problems that they have, the struggles that they're going through, the things in their lives, the wants that they have, the needs that they have? Do you really know what's going on in each and every one of their lives? Because that's what Jesus did when he walked up to this, to this town in Nain, when this widow was getting ready to bury her only son. Now, what does that mean to us? Those of us who are parents who have lost children know what it's like to lose a child. And that being tough enough. This woman was a widow burying her only, her only means of existence. It's not just a son. It's her only means of existence. Because she's a widow. She doesn't have a husband to take. And don't get me wrong, women. I'm not saying that you need a husband to take care of you. But that's the way it was in Jesus' time. Right? Because women had to have a man. Again, Jesus' time. (laughs) I can see it now next week on Facebook. Pastor Jerry said all women have to have a man. (laughs) She's burying her only son. And who asked Jesus to heal this boy? Nobody. Right. Nobody said, hey, look, there's Jesus. Maybe he can do something. 
He saw what was going on. He knew that this woman was a widow. He knew that this was her only son. And so he went and did something about it. He saw a need and he took care of it. He saw someone in distress and he reached out for her. He had compassion on her is what our reading says, right? Jesus stopped because he said, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her. That word there, compassion, it's a beautiful Greek word. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it because it's almost impronounceable. But it means deep-seated gut feeling. It's like when you have that feeling in your gut that you need to do something or butterflies in your stomach. We think about emotion being this in the heart, but in, in the New Testament, in the Greek, emotions are right here in your stomach. That lower intestine. That doesn't really make us feel all gushy, does it? But Jesus had this feeling down in his gut that something needed to happen. And he was moved with compassion. And there's only two other places in the Gospel of Luke where this word is used. It's used three times. It's used once here in our story. It's used once in the parable of the Good Samaritan. When the Samaritan sees the man beaten and he's moved to compassion to do something for him. And then it's used of the story of the... I want to say prodigal son, but the real name is, who remembers? The loving father. The story of the loving father. When the father sees his son from far off, he is moved with compassion. Because he has that feeling that something needs to happen. Right? He has that feeling that something needs to be done. Because God gives us those feelings. There's a beautiful song. Um, by a man named Brandon Heath. And it's been out for a very long time now. Um, and it's called Give Me Your Eyes. And it talks that Brandon wrote this song because he'd been around lots and lots of people. And it, the video of it shows him walking through a crowded airport and all the things that are happening around him and all the things that are going on in the world. And we don't actually see it because we're not focused on it. We don't see the things the way that God sees them. Because God sees the need and takes care of it. And we don't see that. We go through our lives and our day and day interactions and we see all these people around us, but we don't actually see them. The second verse of the song, Give Me Your Eyes, is step out on a busy street, see a girl and our eyes meet. She does the, her best to smile at me, to hide what's underneath. And there's a man just to her right, black suit and a bright red tie, too ashamed to tell his worth, work, wife, too ashamed to tell his wife he's out of work and he's buying time. All of these people going somewhere, why have I never cared? We all have so many things going on in our own lives that we don't know what to do sometimes. We all have so many things happening that we need to take care of. But there's so many things else happening around us. So many things in people's lives where they just need God to come in and somehow be tangible for them. And God comes into their lives in a tangible way. How? How? Through? Through the Holy Spirit. But I heard it over here. Say it louder. Through us. God comes into our lives in a tangible way, not only through the Holy Spirit and through Jesus and through the Word and through our gathering together as the body of Christ and through us taking this meal here, but also through each and every one of us as we step out in faith and do something for those we see around us in need. Because the chorus of that song is, Give me your eyes for just one second. Give me your eyes so I can see everything that I keep missing. Give me your love for humanity. Give me your arms for the brokenhearted, the ones that are far beyond my reach. Give me your heart for the ones forgotten. Give me your eyes so I can see. God, give me your eyes so that I can see everything that's happening around me, so that I can forget about my problems for a moment and help someone else that so desperately needs you in their life. Just like Jesus did for the widow at Nain. Reaching out and doing something in compassion, not being asked to do it, but doing it because you know God has set you there to do it for God. And that's what he's calling each and every one of us to do. To be empowered and emblazoned by the Holy Spirit, sent out into the world to be his hands and feet, and to to give his love, grace, and mercy to everyone. 
So don't look through your eyes. But look through God's eyes. And see the needs all around you. And give them His love. Knowing that He's given it to you. And He's always going to be there. To walk with you and them. Through whatever trials the world might give us.